Feliz Navidad Parkcrest. My name is Rogelio Rodriguez. I'm one of the pastors here. And my name is Rihanna Williams. I'm also one of the pastors here. And we are so grateful to be celebrating Christmas with you this evening. I just want to take a quick second. If you're new to Parkcrest or you just haven't had a chance to get plugged in, do us a favor. Go to our website, parkcrest.org. Click on the I'm new button so that we can start a conversation. We can get to know you and we can just start building community. Yeah. Hey, something I want to know is what is your favorite Christmas movie? My favorite Christmas movie would have to be A Christmas Story, not to be confused with A Christmas Carol. Much more boring. Very How about good. you? What's your favorite? Very good. Mine is It's a Wonderful Life. Talk about boring Christmas movies, but hey, <laughs> that's all right. Classic. That, it's a classic. Each their own. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again for joining us. We're so excited to be here with you guys. Hey, do us a favor. Let us know what your favorite Christmas movie is. Just go ahead and write in the comments below. We'd be super excited to hear which boring Christmas movie or super fun <laughs> Christmas movie you really enjoy. Or classic that we all enjoy and it, it's just a good moderate pace. Or put you to sleep. <laughs> So Parkrest, we want to be as much a part of your Christmas as you are with all of us. So one of the ways that you can do that is by taking pictures and posting to the hashtag Hope is here. We want to check those pictures out, see what you guys are up to this Christmas as you're engaging with our service. So later on in the service tonight, we're all gonna have an opportunity to light a candle together. So I wanna just encourage you, go find a candle, get something ready. If you don't have a candle in your home, grab a phone, anything that's gonna light up so that we can share this really special moment. Well, it is safe to say that it has been a wild year, crazy year, a lot's been going on. We started not even being able to stream live and now we're getting to stream live with all of you every single week. Um, it's incredible and we still are finding hope amidst all of um, just the changes. Yeah, and it, I mean, to just reestablish how bad of a year it's been, I literally found out I lost a button <laughs> while filming here today. But like Rihanna said, it is, it is so, incredible that we're able to hold a service like this. This is not something our church has ever been able to do. I think the church as a whole has been challenged to just work harder to connect with one another. And if anything points to the message of Christmas, God with us, man, I think it's, it's us working to be connected to each other, mm -hmm. right? And I think there's just something really beautiful So I just want to say thank you again for joining us. We're so excited. In just a few seconds, we're going to be starting our Christmas service with you guys. And once again, Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad.
My mama told me something when I was growing up that has forever changed my life. She played the piano at our little church at 3rd and Pine Street for 37 years. She tried to teach me to play the piano, <laughs> but I wasn't very good. She would teach me the names of the notes, what a major key is, what a minor key is. She tried to teach me musical theory, but I was just bored. Then, one day, she told me that the best news in the world is found by playing a simple scale on the piano. I had no idea what she meant, so she told me to play an eight-note scale. So I did. I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it incorrectly and that I needed to play it the other way. So I did. Again, I said, how is that good news? And she said I played it the right way, but I needed to add the pauses. The pauses? She said, the pauses. Add them on the first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. Now, I was frustrated and said, how can eight notes with random pauses be the best news in the world? Then I got up, walked away, and went outside. Frankly, I didn't care what she was talking about. I didn't like playing the piano anyway. Well, years later, my mama got sick and passed away. As I was thinking about her, I remembered what she told me about the piano. Not only that, I still remember the notes she told me to pause. The first, second, fourth, sixth, seventh, and last note. So I sat down at her piano and played the scale with the pauses. And that's when I realized the good news she was talking about.
Jesus. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judah to Bethlehem to the, the town of David because he belonged in the house in line of David. He went there to register with Mary, pledged to be married with him, and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born. And she gave birth to a firstborn, a son. She wrapped him up in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. Angel of the Lord appeared to them, the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born for you. He is the Messiah, the Lord.
My name's Eric Marsh, and I'm one of the pastors here at Parkcrest. It's really, really good to be with you on this special virtual Christmas Eve service. I have a couple traditions that I love around Christmas time. The first is eating Christmas cookies. I love Christmas cookies. I love green Christmas cookies. I love white Christmas cookies. I love the little brown chocolate chip ones. I love Christmas cookies. A second tradition that I love around Christmas is the special Christmas offering that we receive every year. In order to honor the birth of Jesus, we as a church come together and receive an offering that we give entirely away, not benefiting Park Christ. This has been a hard year. It's a year that we have a lot of reasons actually as individuals and as a church not to give. But, but we've decided that we as a church, we're gonna be about hope. We're gonna be a generous church. And this year, 2020, we're asking you to consider giving generously. The, Offering this year is going to go to three different organizations, three groups that are outside of, out of, outside of Long Beach. The first is Tumaini in Kenya. The second is Central Shalom in Mexico. And the third is our disaster relief fund, which benefits all over the world whenever there's a disaster. I'd like to introduce you first to Christine Haley. Thanks, Eric, and hi, everyone. I'm here to talk about Tumaini. A foundation started by Rose and Stanley in 2002 to help kids in Kenya orphaned by the AIDS crisis. Their organization has helped kids up to 1,400 to this day over the years with socioeconomic education and medical relief. This year, we're asking for your help so that Tumaini can improve the medical facility there in Nasi to help their growing community, families, and children that they take care of. My heart for Kenya began in 2013 when God nudged me to go on a missions trip to Kenya without my family, without my husband, without my parents, something I had never done before. And when I got there, I met a community of believers, welcoming us into their homes, to their environment, and just loving on us. I'm excited to go back, I'm excited to take my family again, and I'm looking forward to Parkcrest, helping to my knee move forward. Hi everyone, my name is Yolanda Serrano, and I am here to represent Centro Shalom. Centro Shalom was founded in the year 2000. It is located in Tijuana, Mexico. The main focus on Centro Shalom is the children's ministry. It is instrumental in shaping the lives of young children who live in extreme poverty and are prone to falling in the cracks of addiction. Through Parkrest Partnership, Centro Shalom has been able to assist and support these children in their education. Many of these children were able to finish their higher education and are now working as pastors, teachers, and leaders of Centro Shalom. The goal is to build a bigger and safer sanctuary that will accommodate 300 adults and 200 children. On behalf of Centro Shalom, thank you, Parkes family, for 20 years of partnership and for showing God's love in a tangible way. Hi, Parkcrest family. My name is Hannah Alicia, and I'm here to talk to you guys about Hurricane Etta recovery for Honduras. This cause is near and dear to my heart as my family is from there, and we, brothers and sisters in Christ, are really in need because they have lost their homes and all of their belongings. We are working on sending essential supplies to different churches, parishes, and to shelters in order to help those in need. We hope to bring hope to people in need during this time. Thank you for all of your support. Thanks, Christine. Thanks, Yolanda. Thanks, Hannah. Hey, our goal this year is $30,000. We want you to join us as we together give generously to honor and worship Jesus. You can give in three different ways. One, if you give online already, you can use Secure Give and give a specific designated gift, designate Christmas offering. The second way you can give is you can text to give. You can text the word Christmas and an amount to 562-203-3363. The third way you can give is many of you have received the, the letter that we sent to you in the mail and there's an envelope in there. You can drop it off or you can mail it back to us and all of the money that we receive will go to these three organizations. Thank you in advance for being generous.
Christmas Park Crest, so glad that you're here to join us on this Christmas Eve uh, service. Hey, my name is Jared. I had the wonderful opportunity to serve as lead pastor at this church. If I've never met you or never seen you, I uh, just want to say thank you so much for, for joining us today. You know, I was reflecting in a, a phrase or a word that comes to my mind uh, with this Christmas experience. It's, it's, it's a different kind of Christmas. It's a different kind of Christmas. And, and what do I mean? Well, usually when I think of Christmas, I think of a few things. I think of joy. I think of candy. I think of candy. I think of candy. And I think of office parties. And I think of like the crisp smell in the air as the season is changing and we know that winter is upon us. I, I think about opportunities to travel and being with family. And this year, it just, it just feels different. If you remember the video that we just played, it just showed a, a, a myriad of ways that people are arriving in this season. Uh, some with great hope, but also some with tremendous pain for those who are dealing with loss. Or maybe it's a cancer diagnosis, but we are coming in this Christmas. It, it just feels different. You see, oftentimes I think those images that I just said before, like joy and candy and candy and candy, that, that I think it gives us, that's the image that we have been given and we see it in our media, but I'm, but I'm wondering, is that really what Christmas is about? Like when I, when I, when I think of it, I think of like this beautiful manger and, and Jesus who's nine pounds, six ounces, and he has these chunky little cheeks and he's like, wah, 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 like that's how he cries. Uh, like that's the image that we often see and that Mary is just resting and so excited that she had given birth. But, but did that really happen that way? You see, I, I would actually beg us to think about this a little bit differently. What do I mean? What if I told you that the way that we're probably experiencing the Christmas this year in a pandemic with uncertainty, with fear, is probably more like the way that Mary and Joseph experienced the very first Christmas. See, earlier we had a reading from Luke 2, which my son Declan read, giving some clap emojis, and my daughter McKenna, she was strumming the ukulele. Uh, give it up for them. They're probably going to be really excited that I gave them a shout out, but they're, they're great kids. They're great kids. Um, but they read Luke 2 in this reading, and so I just want you to remember that, but there are a few things. It talked about that Caesar Augustus had issued a census, and uh, Mary and Joseph had to go back to Bethlehem in order to be counted, and then finally, you know, the baby was born there. And I want to talk about that that scene for a little bit and, and what they actually experienced. So I don't think it was joy and unicorn and Santa pants and bunnies, but this was actually a difficult trip for them to make. What was the first thing? I think during the first Christmas, Mary and Joseph experienced extreme discomfort. Imagine this, Mary's about 14 to 15 years old and she is traveling while pregnant. Now, back in 2017, my wife and I, we had a chance to go to New York City when we were living outside of Chicago. We went to go see her, her family, and it was supposed to be about a 14-hour drive. It ended up being about 16, 18 hours. But here's the reason. My wife was pregnant. We had three kids, and she was pregnant with our fourth child. And I asked her, like, what was traveling while pregnant? <laughs> like, she said, uncomfortable. She said, I, I couldn't get in the right position in the seat. It was cold, but it was hot. 
Uh, she said her feet were swelling. She says, just the, and we're in this car for literally 14, 15, 16 hours. That's uncomfortable for someone who's probably about six months pregnant at the time and we're trying to get to see our family. That's a, it's not a comfortable journey to go on. Now, how is that like Mary? Now, check it out. Mary and Joseph had to go to Bethlehem from where they were located. It was about a 90 mile trek. Now, that's about from here to maybe Palm Springs from Long Beach. Now, uh, for us, we might be able to get there in an hour and a half. If you're feeling really froggy, you might get there in an hour. Who knows? Uh, I won't tell on you if you do get there in an hour. Uh, but we have air conditioning. We have, you know, or heat if it gets too cold, air conditioning if it gets too hot. We can have snacks after snacks, all these good things, uh, and we can get to our trip. Now, for Mary and Joseph to make that 90-mile trip on a good journey, it would take about uh, 20 miles a day, five days, four if they're feeling really good. Because she was pregnant, it, they could probably only travel between 10 and 15 miles a day. So you're talking about seven to 10 days that it's going to take them. So imagine, let me talk to the moms really quickly. Imagine you are nine months pregnant and you have to walk 90 miles or maybe you're riding a donkey. I remember my wife said when we were driving down the highway, she felt every bump, every turn. She felt every single thing. The baby would move, all of that. So imagine Mary's on top of a donkey. They're trying to go 90 miles. It's taking them seven to 10 days. By the end of the trip, you're exhausted. You are uncomfortable. And she's 16 years old or 15 or 14. Just keep that in mind. Not only was it discomfort, but also this journey, it was dangerous. It was dangerous for two reasons. Number one, just the weather changes. So in, when they were traveling on this trip, uh, it could go from extreme hot, it can get really cold. Uh, the terrain was not friendly. A lot of it might have been uphill. And it's just, it's just bad. But not only that, but there are thieves often on these trails. So they would either have to try to hitch up to another caravan that was heading to Bethlehem in order to protect themselves. But it was a dangerous journey. Same one back in 2017 when we were heading back to Chicago from New York. Uh, 80 inches of snow fell in Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> because we got caught wind of that, we were able to go another route. But there were no weather predictors when Mary and Joseph were traveling. They did not have the weather channel to say, huh, what's the weather going to be on our journey to Bethlehem? Let's take, let's go north. Or go, no, it just comes and they experience it. It's dangerous because they're facing the elements and they're potentially facing thieves. And then finally, it's, it's disillusionment. Now, what do I mean? So at the end of the trip... You finally see your destination. I, I, I love the end of a trip, whether it's a plane ride or whether it's a car drive and you and you know you've reached your destination and you're like, ah, I'm going to kick up my feet. I'm going to relax. I'm going to get a cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee. Don't take don't take it out on me. My wife drinks enough for both of us. And I'm just going to relax. And, and they, they they see an end in the distance. And they're like, oh, yes, that's we're going to we're going to stay. They get to the end, they, they knock, they go inside, and the person says, we have no room for you. I, just imagine that you traveled for a long way and you thought that you were going to reach your destination, and now you're, you're sitting idly because you're like, man, I, I thought we reserved a room. <laughs> I wonder if they're like, Joseph, were you supposed to reserve a room? I thought I did reserve a room. Like, I just wonder what that conversation was like. <laughs> And they're disillusioned because they're like, why? So, so imagine what may, if anybody should have gotten the royal treatment of a birth experience, it was Mary. She was giving birth to the savior of this world. She should have, she should have had elephants, tigers, lions. Like God could have just made a Cadillac really quickly and just drug them all along like to make an entrance. They should have had horns, dun, 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 all of that. But now it's like, I traveled all this way. I got this baby that's about to be born. So she's in labor. And now there's nowhere for me to sleep. Why? 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 Disillusionment. I think many of us 
have this same experience of both, of, of all discomfort, of danger, of disillusionment. What I mean, this year, we're probably experiencing discomfort because we've been experiencing this global pandemic. It's not what anybody signed up for or imagined in January, but now we find ourselves in the last holiday of the year still living this out. Discomfort because maybe you've lost income or you lost your job. Discomfort because maybe, maybe you've had, maybe the election season caused friction within your family, so now you're losing relationships. D you know, d discomfort because of all of those things. Or maybe you're experiencing danger because you lost a job, you're experiencing food insecurity. Maybe you're experiencing danger because you're, you're, you're one check away from, from, from not knowing what you're going to do next. You're, you're experiencing danger or, or disillusionment because it's like, why? Why did this happen to me? I, I, I did everything I was supposed to do. I did everything that I thought that God called me to do. Why? 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 Remember Jesus on the cross. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Does anybody else feel like you're forsaken in this season? This is supposed to be the season of hope, the season of joy, the season of unicorns, the season of red pants, candy, all of that great stuff, but, but we're arriving here in discomfort, danger, and disillusionment. What are we supposed to do? Now, here's the interesting thing. When we look at this story, while Mary experienced discomfort, being pregnant, traveling 90 miles on a donkey and walking, while she experienced discomfort, while she experienced danger, and she experienced disillusionment, guess what? There was something inside of her that the world needed. That something, it was the hope of the world. It was the, the hope of creation. It is, it is the, the, the culmination of the story of, of God bringing himself back to us by Mary giving birth to Emmanuel, literally, which means God with us. She carried hope. She gave birth to hope. Hope was inside of her while she was disillusioned. Hope was inside of her while she was experiencing danger. Hope was inside of her while she was experiencing discomfort. And I want to let you know today that even if you're experiencing one of those three or all three at the same time, or maybe even something else, there is a hope inside of you that the world needs to see. There's a hope in a story inside of you that the world needs to know. There's a God that loves them so much that he sent his only son in the form of Jesus Christ through Mary to give us hope and an eternity. That message is inside of you. Hope. What does hope not do? Hope doesn't mean that these things don't exist. Hope is not a great eraser that just says, oh, look, everything's fine. No, hope is a foundation of our life that even in the midst of trials, even in the midst of tribulation, even in the midst of discomfort, even in the midst of disillusionment, that we know that Emmanuel, God is with us all the way. How many of y'all believe that with me today? That hope is inside of you and the world needs to see it. That hope was inside of Mary and as she gave birth to Jesus Christ, everything changed. Hope is here. And our job as believers is to tell that story to a dying world that needs to hear it. Hope is here. Yes, we experience pain. Hope doesn't take away that pain, but hope can refocus our pain and our purpose on Jesus. It gives us strength. I imagine that Mary, yes, is that a thief around the corner and she and she doesn't know, oh man, maybe maybe the weather changed on her uh, and she realized she finally got to her end and she's like, man, I got nowhere to stay. She realized that even though I don't have anywhere to stay, there's a hope inside of me that needs to come out. Guess what, people of Parkcrest, there's a hope in you that needs to come out and the world needs to see it. There's a beauty about having this hope on our own. But there's a subtle thing that we see in this passage, in this text or in this story, is that there's, 
there's Mary and there's Joseph. A little bit earlier and later, there's Elizabeth. There's, there's Zechariah. There's, there's different people who are all a part of Mary's waiting process to bring this hope to the world. Each one of them, we, we don't hope alone. We hope together. We have a value and it's called life with. And, and we firmly believe here at Parkcrest that we should not do this Christian experience alone, but it is better when we do it together. We have an amazing story that has happened in the life of our church. There, there are two people, it's a George and Rosie, and they, they found us in the middle of a pandemic when we're experiencing disillusionment, when we're experiencing danger, when we're experiencing discomfort. But yet in all of that, they found a way to create a community and now they're leading a community that is hoping together. Check this story out. Twenty twenty has been one of those years where, I, for me, I feel like it's it's was either going to force us to run or fight for something. It, your spiritual development and who you are as a Christian was going to be uh, challenged because of what's going on in our country, what's going on politically, physically, emotionally. The, being in this season of you know the virus and the pandemic and how church is done. You have to dial up the intentionality to, to really make meaningful connections. So when I got married, I started going to the church that George had been attending since he was 16. Um, and um, I really tried to integrate myself into the church. It was a little hard for me. Um, and we were there for maybe seven years after we got married. But there was always something missing for me. Coming to Parkhurst was was us finding a church together. Rosie and I really believe in like working out your faith in the context of community. Sometimes it helps to have the context of community that you can trust. Um, that sort of people who become your people, the people you call when you know you want to have fun, the people you call when you are going through a, a low time, and, and that and the people who you know are praying for you the people who are um, mindful of you, who remember to check in, that sort of thing, here and there, that sort of thing. I think so we were looking for that when we came to Parkcrest. You know, COVID hit and we stopped gathering. And then from March to May, it just felt lonely and it felt, and spiritually, I just mm -hmm. wasn't connecting. A lot of it had to do with trying to figure out how to live this pandemic out. <laughs> you definitely have to be very intentional to be in community during the pandemic. So we've in a very short period of time of connecting with people at church at Parkcrest have begun to develop some, some actual like genuine bonds like with people, like real bonds, you know? And I think that's the beauty of the home community. It's, it's an opportunity to kind of um, let your hair down and just be who you are, who God made you to be. So emotionally, I'll speak for myself. It's it's been uh, it's been great, not only to to facilitate that, but also for me to like make those meaningful connections. I have found that we all feel very strongly for each other. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking about that in our last meeting. How thankful we were for the group, um, and how beautiful the group has come together. I'm I, I love who each one of them are and just what they contribute. And that's been, and also what they contribute to me because honestly, there's some great people in the group. I was always the planner for the future. And I realized um, really today is what I have and what am I gonna do today? Mm -hmm. um, so that started shifted and shifting <clears throat> in me during this time and I've taken it as a gift. So it's hard to think about the future because we really don't know what it's gonna look like. Whatever available next step, is there, I, I want to I be ready to take the next step. If I think about the big picture, I, I have no clue it's overwhelming. But if I think about just yeah. the next decision, the next step, the next yes, then it, it feels manageable. And, and I think um, it's nice because I feel very present in the choices that I'm making at the moment. 
The challenge of today and tomorrow is, is real and present, but so is what God is doing. It's real and present. And I'm, uh, that's something that I can hold on to. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, George and Rosie, for, for just modeling this hope that we can have together. And maybe you are experiencing this Christmas season alone. I want to encourage you. I want to challenge you. Let's figure out a way to hope together. If in 2021 you want it to be different, have someone with you. Do life. Even if it's over Zoom right now, eventually this is going to be over. And then we can be back in person and we can experience this hope together and we can create it in our city. Our mission here is we exist to bring hope by inviting people into connection with Jesus and each other. Hope together. This is a different Christmas by our standards. But by Mary and Joseph's standards, ha, they experienced this and probably a little bit worse. But yet, she still gave birth to the light of the world. And that's the message that we carry with us today. That yes, when the light of the world and the hope came, it changed everything, but maybe my situation changed. That's okay. Now I have renewed hope. Now I have renewed true joy. In this season, we can be instruments of hope to share with the dying world who desperately needs to experience it. Hope is here and we will display that. Let us pray. God, I thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to experience the love and grace and forgiveness when you sent your son, Emmanuel, literally meaning God with us. That promise was that, that promise did not mean that everything would always be okay. The promise did not mean that everything would always go our way, but the promise is that you would be with us. And so, Lord, in our seasons of discomfort, I pray that we begin to look to you. In our seasons of disillusionment, I pray that we look to you. In our seasons where we may experience danger, I pray that we look to you, not as a band-aid that will, that will cover it or an eraser that will make it go away, but that we, through our faith, we can lean in on you and you will carry us through this season. Let us be the people of hope who shines our light so bright that the world has no choice but to look our way when it's in the midst of darkness. I thank you for this light. I thank you for this hope. And I thank you for this joy. The joy that we have today, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. And we believe that. In Jesus' name, let everybody say or type, amen, amen, amen. Thank you again. And we're going to move into a portion of our, of our service where we're going to have a candlelight, candle lighting. So what we want you to do is, uh, you could have seen a slide earlier, it was also on our social media, that, hey, if you have a candle in your house, like, get the candle, get your match, turn all the lights out in your house, and we're going to experience this together. But there's one more ask I want you to do is that although we are apart right now, we want to be able to experience this moment together and see who is experiencing with us. So what I want to invite you to do is when you have your candle, you know, take a picture of it. Maybe it's you and your family. Maybe you even do a selfie. But if you put it on social media, whether it's Facebook or Instagram, tag Park Crest Christian Church in it. And also put the hashtag hope is here. Tag us and put the hashtag hope is here because we want to be able to see, man, look at what God is doing throughout our area, how we're connected and being the light this season. We can recognize that light in the world has come and hope is now here. Parkrest, we just want to 
take a moment and recognize the power of light and we want to do something different is that together we want to read the scripture uh, it'll be john chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 and just take a moment to fill your home with god's holy word let's read together in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god he was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. Take out your matches. And let's light these candles together. May we reflect on this light, the light of God's love, the light of your hope. And may our actions be reflective of Christ in everything that we do because we represent his light. Oh 
Hey Parkcrest, while my hope was by this time we'd be able to gather again in person, uh, that's just not in the cards right now. However, my prayer is that this experience was meaningful for you and your families as we collectively remember the birth of Christ. That yes, we might not have everything we want right now, but guess what? Hope is here and it's reflected in the light that has entered the world. We're working towards every day I always tell myself, we're one day closer to being together. But guess what? While we're apart, we can still hope together. So with that being said, I'd just love to leave you with a blessing. If you could extend your hands. Brothers and sisters of Park Crest Christian Church, may we flicker with the light of your love so that people can see and know you through our actions and through our love. May we remember this week, tomorrow, that Jesus is the reason for this season. And may we truly reflect that in everything that we do. We believe you, we love you, and we thank you, Jesus, for what you have done. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. Merry Christmas to every single one of you, from my family to yours. We absolutely love you. We are connected through God's spirit and God's love. We are one family. We are hoping together. Hope is here. Hey, thank you again for joining us. This has been an awesome service. We're so grateful we got to share this Christmas evening with you. Yes, make sure that you guys like and subscribe to our YouTube channel as a way to stay connected. And make sure you guys use those hashtags, hope hashtag. is here, so that we can celebrate Christmas with all of you. Oh my hey. gosh, it's a Christmas miracle. It's snowing in Long Beach. Yes, it is. So cool. And another Christmas miracle. We will be right back here online December 27th. We'll see you there. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Feliz Navidad. God bless. Oh! <laughs> that stung a little. Yeah, that works. <laughs>